We've heard about volunteerism. So what next? Let's consider the equation youth plus future equals to youth action for S SDG. So ladies and gentlemen, our next topic is youth action for SDG by team A. Just a reminder that we'll also be playing the alarm five minutes before the end of your session and when your time is up. So here's to introduce our speaker, team A. Team A, you can take the floor. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, no worries. Right, everything ready? You good? Okay. Yes, ready. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Matthew, and I'm here with my partner, Sue. Today, we are representing Group 8 on the topic of My Actions for SDGs. Now, this topic is a bit difficult to explain in such a short time. So how about we start off with something we're all familiar with? Let's start off with a meme. I'm going to ask you one time, what is sustainability? Oh yeah? Well, I'll do you one better. Who is sustainability? <laughs> I'll do you one better. Why is sustainability? Wow, thank you, Tim Tim. That's an excellent question, actually. That is why I'm going to answer it here today. However, I don't have the answer, actually. You guys have the answer. Now, I'm going to drag it all of you through an activity. So imagine this, you are stranded alone on a deserted island and to your left is 15 nasi katong, which somehow doesn't expire. And to your right is a timer for 15 days. So what is your strategy? How do you survive 15 days? Now, whatever your strategy is, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure we all know that eating every bit of that nasi katong on the first day is a horrible idea. Why? <laughs> My answer is simple. It is simply unsustainable. We want to make sure there's nasi katong for tomorrow. And just like with nasi katong, we shall do so with the economy, the climate, and the environment. We want to make sure tomorrow is just as good, if not better than today. We are team eight, ensuring there's nasi katong for tomorrow. So now that we've got a rough idea of why sustainability is so important, just what can we do to contribute to a sustainable future? Well, thankfully, we don't have to think about that since the guys over at the UN have already figured that out. The solution? The Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you, Matt. Now, these 17 goals are actually a blueprint. So if we follow them, we might actually just have a better and more sustainable future for each and every single one of us. Is that not awesome? Now, these are actually set up in 2015 by the UN General Assembly. Yes, we actually have like eight years left. They are meant to be achieved by the year 2030. So these goals ranges from things from no poverty to zero hunger to just climate action. So guys, who is responsible? Who needs to take action? Look into the black screen and what do you see? Do you not see your reflection? Yes, you and I and each and every single one of us sitting here today needs to take action so that we can meet our SDGs by 2030. So how does Brunei fit into the picture? How can we contribute directly? But well, once again, this has already been thought out for us. May I introduce to you My Actions for SDGs. An NGO founded in June 2018 by Dina Alias, it is an awareness campaign that aims to inspire people to start taking actions for the SDGs and to bring out other people's voices together to help define global goals. Wow, that sounds ambitious. How do they do that? My Actions for SDGs intends to achieve this by educating the public, increasing their awareness of world issues and the SDGs themselves, empowering them to take actions for the SDGs and engaging with them and collaborating with them to make it happen. But Matt, Matt, where do I come in? According to their Instagram page, there's a plethora of actions each of us can take individually to contribute. Every little bit counts. You may choose not to use plastic bags for shopping trips, carpool to reduce emissions, pick up any litter we find on the ground. You may also choose to reuse what donate our old clothes and abstain from using our electronics before we go to sleep. If you'd like to contribute further, you may even consider taking part in events organized by My Actions for 
Now, let me tell you about three of their latest events. The latest is, of course, the UN Children's Day Art Competition held in 2021. Now, this was quite recent. So this event takes artwork by kids that reimagines Brunei in a greener and brighter way after COVID-19. Next, we have the Youth for Policy Workshop, which covers youth policy and, of course, the climate and green policy. Next, we have SDGs Inspire Poetry and Visual Arts, which is a spoken word performance and visual arts exhibition. Now, is that not awesome? And oh, would you look who it is? It's Miss Dina Alias, the founder of My Actions for SDGs herself. Please, everyone, can we give her a round of applause to welcome her to the stage? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Team Aid, for the very warm welcome. And thank you as well um, to Sean and BIBDS for having me today. Um, and yeah, I think we'll go straight on with the interview, I suppose. I think they're all starstruck, Dina. <laughs> Unfortunately, goal number 18, good internet hasn't been added yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm just waiting for, I think, Nab was it Nabila? Who's doing the interview with me today. But I hope everyone is doing um, great today. I'm happy to be here. And um, I can't wait to answer the questions. Dina, while we are waiting, I just wanted sure. to comment that, you know, your team is actually making SDG look a lot cooler than it is. <laughs> I thought I made it cool. It's not cool enough. <laughs> not no, cool no, no, enough no, for no. The Gen Z. Uh, move, move aside, Dina. Welcome team number eight. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they, they can make it cooler. They, they are the BTS for SDG. Yes. <laughs> So who is supposed to interview Dina? Hi, Nabila, sorry. Um, you are muted. I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Can I, can everyone else hear Dina? Uh, no, I uh, think there's can. some technical no, issues. No, we cannot. Can you try checking your audio? Yeah, no problem. Uh, take your time, Nabila. Select a microphone, I think. You can choose whatever you're using. Or check also happy your to have you audio. here, Miss Dina. Thank you. Happy <laughs> to be here. Uh, well, since, since Nabila is having some technical problem, I will be uh, taking. Uh, I will be helping her in the meantime. So, hello, Miss Dina. It's an honor to meet you. And my first question for you would be that uh, how long, how long have you been working for my action for SDG, and how do you get it started? Um, thank you for the question, Jing Jing, and um, thank you for stepping up as well uh, while we're trying to do the technical difficulties. Uh, I have been involved with my actions for SDG since 2018. Uh, that's when I started uh, with the ASEAN My World 2030 program, which helped empower um, individuals from ASEAN countries to localize and mobilize um, increasing awareness about the SDGs in their respective countries. And what I learned from that program was uh, very empowering. And it therefore led me to create this campaign that we see now. And um, uh, at first I, I saw that the SDGs and sustainability wasn't really part of the conversation here in Brunei. Um, it wasn't part of the conversation in the public and private sector, as well as among the youths. So it was really important for the campaign to therefore um, try to engage, educate, and empower many of our youths today, and as well as children, on how better to take action for the global goals, which is um, what we've been doing so far. And even though officially the program has ended um, in September 2018, uh, I, I still think the SDGs are important and it's still important to be talked about in Brunei and hence why we're still, um, we're still growing and we're still finding more ways to empower youths. I see, I see, thank you. Okay, um, can you guys hear oh. me now? 
Yes, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh my god. All right, so Jingjing Jing already asked uh, the first question, so I'm going to ask the second question. Uh, Ms. Tina, what is the greatest challenge facing the company? Um, I think that the greatest challenge I've had so far is um, at the beginning of the campaign. Um, being the only Bruneian advocate means that I was doing a lot of the planning, the organizing, recruiting, and even doing the social media campaign on my own. And at first I was struggling because I was juggling both my professional work as a teacher and also the campaign needed to be constantly moving. So it was really difficult for me to just have that, that load on myself. And I realized that eventually it's okay to seek help from other people, especially the people that you trust and the people that you know who are very talented and insightful and be able to give, uh, to give me feedback. So I, I became more sort of vulnerable and brave to ask for help. And um, after that, a lot of things changed quite quickly. And I was able to get help from local NGOs as their as partners. And I was able to recruit a whole team that was doing like the graphic design, the social media campaign. And, um, and you know, it, it became much more than I expected. And it became much more than I was, you know, if I were to do it alone, I, I wouldn't be as, the, the event wouldn't be as successful as, as it did. And I think, I think the, the main takeaway is that although we do face challenges and challenges are to be expected anyway in any youth work, uh, it's important to seek out help and, and not be afraid to seek out help because um, you know, these, we, we, have, we have so much um, potential for the youths as well to, to use their strengths. So um, I think, I think um, the challenge was there, but um, being resilient, uh, you know, came out of that. Wow, that is a great answer, Ms. Dina. So um, here's a follow-up question. How do you keep your team motivated despite conflicts and obstacles? Um, I think so far, uh, keeping the team motivated is, hasn't been that of an issue, um, alhamdulillah. But I think um, avoiding conflict, again, I think conflict needs to be embraced. I feel mm -hmm. like conflict, sometimes people want to try to avoid it, but I don't think it's um, possible to just remove that out of the equation. When we work with so many individuals with diverse opinions, diverse strengths and skills, uh, in fact, conflict should be something that we expect. It's dealing with the conflict that will impact the way that uh, we work with each other. And for me, the, the main thing that I try to instill with the community is that I always try to communicate um, and give feedback uh, with the best of my ability and try to, to communicate with my, my team from a place of goodness. So whenever there's something, it's, I'm, I'm giving them the feedback because I, I cherish them and I love them and I want them to do better and not because of anything malicious or anything like that. And I think having this communication is so important. It ties in with um, what Ms. Afika was talking about earlier about how we should always empathize with our team members because what we're doing is, is something towards a, a greater goal and a greater purpose. And we should set aside our egos or our, you know, like our own um, biased mindset so that we can collectively work together and communicate in a more open way. And I think um, that again is something that I try to do. Wow, what an awesome answer. Okay, so Ms. Tina, tell me when was the most impactful or memorable my actions for SDG event? I always say this um, during interviews, the, the most impactful um, event that we've, we did was uh, back in 2018 when it first started, where there were about 150 volunteers who came to Bandar Kucheria 
to uh, to talk to the general public, uh, no matter what their ages are. Um, they were like they were talking to the older people. They were talking to children. They were talking to um, tourists as well, asking them um, which six of the global goals were they most concerned about, um, and uh, the the logistics of handling 150 volunteers was uh, quite difficult. But with the help of my team as well, again it made everything possible and it was able to we were able to uh dispatch a lot of the volunteers throughout bandar and um and they were able to carry out that survey and i think um what i really got inspired was that the fact that the fact that the youths are not afraid in fact they're so brave to you know to just go up to a person and ask them about something completely random at the time sdgs weren't that popular it wasn't the, a buzzword or anything like that um, but they 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 were able to do that and I I still look to that day and see like how much potential um, these youths can have just as long as we give them the platform and space and not only just space but like the space to make mistakes um, and I think I think again like that was one of my favorite moments in my life <laughs> Okay. Oh, the event sounds so interesting. I wish I was there. Um, so what is the future plan for the next event and how it will be like? I think the, the future events would definitely involve um, children. I'd like to go to schools because I firmly believe that children are going to be not only the beneficiaries of the SDGs in the future, but also they should be the ones being involved in SDGs. So they are the partakers of um, the SDGs. So I'm trying to engage with the younger generation and hopefully they're the ones who will be um, doing the youth work as well. Wow, okay. So uh, Ms. Dina, we have observed that many people have the precognition that their actions do not matter as they are small and insignificant. What do you have to say to these people? Um, I'd like to first ask them why. Like why, um, why, why are they saying that? What is their, what, what, what are they basing it on? Is there like any evidence? Is it, is it from their own personal experience? Because oftentimes when we assume things, it doesn't, it's not based on anything that we've learned before. It's just a, a biased opinion. And um, I definitely think from my own experiences that um, anything we do that has a purpose and anything that we do that has good intentions will definitely create a valuable and uh, meaningful act, uh, impact to the community. <laughs> and in fact, um, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think. Oh, I would like to it. say um, thank you, Team Eight. Thank you, Ms. Dina. You were no great. Team Eight, you were amazing. Now, let me introduce our mentor, Mr. Tan Feng Leong, Chief Finance Officer, Bank Islam Brunei Darussalam, from our home. You may take the floor. Is Mr. Tan here? I believe he told us specifically not to call him Mr. Tan. Yeah, well, are you here? Please come to the I'm stage. Sorry? I believe he told us not to address him as Mr. <laughs> Tan. Yeah, well, are you here with us today? Please come take the stage. <laughs> hmm, seems not. Um, I think his internet connection is probably off at the moment. So we will That's wait for a few minutes for him to come back, okay? Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> while we wait, can I, can I uh, ask Dina a question? Hey, Dina. Um, Hi. You know, one of the reasons why I invited you here 
of course, SDG is a very important topic, but you know, uh, you also represent a trailblazer, meaning that before anyone does anything, you know, before there was SDG, you know, being populated into the youth community in Brunei, there wasn't any. And then you came along and say, hey, this is important. Let me start something, right? Uh, people like you, we call it crazy. Right? <laughs> um, and, and um, you know, there, there are good kind of crazy, there are bad kind of crazy, and there are crazy kind of crazy. But, you know, uh, for trailblazers, these are three in one. Uh, you know, how, how do you start something that, uh, you know, most people would think is impossible? Oh, it's a, it's a difficult question. Um, yeah, you're right. I think it, it was pretty crazy at the time <laughs> uh, because no one knew about it. Well, very little people knew about it. Um, I think I just sort of believed that I could do it. I mean, it's so cliche to say that, but um, I think I, I knew that this was important for the community and for the youth. So even though it was so crazy, I still, you know, pulled through because I, I for sure wanted SDGs to be part of the conversation. So even though I encounter a lot of like weird reactions or um, people not knowing much about it and I had to sort of um, start the conversation, I still sort of pulled through because I, because I understand and I believe that um, it should be talked about. And I think when, when I had that, that purpose and that goal in mind, um, no matter what I did, crazy or not, I think it just didn't matter as much. And, and I believed that, that um, with the help of others as well, that I, I, could, I could do it. Uh, Dina, what most people don't know, what, what we all are looking at right now is you being on the spotlight, but before that, you know, even if it's for yourself or YB Karunisa or, um, you know, uh, uh, Africa, you know, with all the NGOs, there is really no applaud. You know, you're, you're just going at it, you know, sometimes doubting yourself, asking what yourself whether or not it's worth it. Yeah. You know, how, how do you sustain? You know, just now there was a question about, you know, how, how does one sustain it in the long term to Africa? So I think the same question can be asked of you. How, how do you make sure that there is the fuel that keeps you going? Because, you know, it is being an NGO means that you're not being paid to do things. You know, a lot of times you're out of pocket, uh, you know, so you're giving your time, you're giving your money, uh, you know, you're, you're risking people calling you crazy, um, you know. Uh, and, and the big picture of what we're doing here is, resilience right mm. you know how, how does resilience come into the picture for for ngos i think um for me i take a lot of my inspiration from the youths themselves and i'm um, seeing them do a lot of work makes me want to do the work as well so i'm not just trying to lead myself in that sense i'm trying to lead people so that they can become the next um, in their own strength and in, in their own ways, they become the next people who care about the SDGs, which is what I'm doing with the, my current team right now. I am like sort of, you know, giving them the space to, to make mistakes. And, and at the same time, I'm putting them a, a lot of trust in them because I know how passionate they are about sustainability. And again, I think, I think it's, I think it's so important to, give but also like get something back and I for me it's definitely seeing a lot of the youths um, doing what they love the most um, in terms of sustainability so in fact um, I get a lot of my energy from seeing the people right now like here and them doing the the best of their abilities to to contribute to um, the SDGs. You know for those people who don't understand the value of giving it's impossible to explain but yeah. i think uh, I, I think that you all have to try in order to do it i understand that peng leong is back in the house uh can we you know put our hand together for peng leong 
Hey, how are you? <laughs> hey, Peng Leung. Just now, just now, when we try to call you Mr. Tan, and then you know, Hao Xiang was telling us off, saying that you don't like to be old. <laughs> well, it's more like Sean. Thanks. Oh, in, the, you know, in the public area, which explained the mask, but I guess we are in the mask era anyway. Oh. Uh, this is what happens when you get to a certain number in your age, where you desperately <laughs> try to keep it low. And, uh, the, the background the background of the whole summit says youth, right? So the, the moment you are dealing with the youth, uh, I think we will try desperately to be as young as possible as well, because that's where all the good ideas come from. So we, we, there are two people in the room trying to look cool and young. <laughs> I won't mention the other one. <laughs> um, I, I understand that your team has questions or program for you. Uh, someone say you la Sean, come on. Hey, it's my party, all right, Gabriel. Be kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'll, I'll pass it back to uh, to team number eight. Uh, the floor is yours, and uh, the mentor is yours. So are you all supposed to interrogate uh, Mr. <laughs> CFO of uh, BIBD? <laughs> so whatever you ask, don't ask about money, okay? Yeah, take it away. <laughs> okay, so for this session, we plan for it to be an, like, an open session to everyone. But I do have ah. one question which I desperately need to be answered. Uh, PL, you said, because in, the, in our practice session, you said that our mm -hmm link between our island analogy and then sustainability wasn't strong enough, right? If you have seen the presentation, do you think it's better now? Uh, two, two points, and I kind of put it in a smaller WhatsApp group. One is, I'm glad that you all didn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the, the reality is, uh, uh, once you tweak it a little bit, and uh, Sean, Sean, just to give you a bit of a background, in, in the bre breakout session, um, I told the team, I really don't get your Nasi Kato story. <laughs> That's the best story of the day, bro. Yes, I know that. And I saw a lot of <laughs> going on about it and created that kind of impact. Uh, so I told them that, but towards the end, and, and as the, the, the team was trying to develop the idea further, uh, I have to admit, I have to tell myself, okay, maybe sometimes it's better to open your ears and listen to the young people as well. Uh, because maybe they have a point. And, and I think uh, the, the team can tell you that towards the end, I say, okay, then you focus on developing the Nasikato story, <laughs> make it very clear. And to, today I, 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 I was, my, my timing was almost perfect. I heard the whole story <laughs> and you all made it very clear you have 15 days and 15 pack of nasi kato. Don't eat everything you want. <laughs> um, the, the only thing is you have to have an, uh, a fridge in the island. And, 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 and Sean, you see, that's where the question was already answered because they said the nasi kato won't expire. And that's a very weird <laughs> thing when they say the nasi kato won't expire. It's because uh, they actually also listen to me. I'm glad they also listen to me as a mentor. I told them, but if you wait 15 days, your nasikato will expire. So they said your nasikato won't expire. <laughs> so John, they already answered your question. <laughs> yeah. um, ladies and gentlemen, you, you all have no idea, but uh, we are in the presence of, uh, you know, one of the senior executives from BIBD. And it's a rare opportunity that we are able to, uh, you know, ask people of such ranking questions. Uh, you know, I know that the discussion is on uh, SDG, but please seize this opportunity, make an impression, ask good questions, guys. Yeah. And, and maybe to just help Sean along, I think um, the whole sustainability topic is an extremely important topic for us, whether for me personally or for the uh, bank as a whole, or even for the nation as a whole. So I think it's something that's going to be either close to our hearts today, or if not, will be very, very close to our hearts, at least in the near future or in the, in the future to come. 
So feel free to ask me question about dollars and cents. I will have a very good way of answering them. Uh, but probably put you to sleep as well, or ask me anything that comes to your mind as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can you tell them your story on how you become the uh, profit and loss department head of department? I think you're muted. Yeah. Jing Jing, I thought that was a joke that I said I won't repeat. But anyway, it's a public forum with uh, I'm looking at 514 people, which is a, a huge success for the YES summit. Uh, but my full name is Peng Leong, and I make a point to say almost two things to everyone I work with. Uh, I'll start with the number one first. Please do not call me Sir or call me Mr Tan. It just uh, make it sound too formal for my liking. Uh, so call me PL. And the reason why everybody call me PL was my initial is paying, uh, my, that's my initial paying Leong. Uh, but more importantly, the initial also become profit and loss and you are the CFO of a bank. So obviously my boss like the profit, not the loss bit. So, but anyway, that's my initial. <laughs> Um, Sean, I think you're muted. Uh, I think one, one of the things that most people are curious about is why is your bank, uh, you know, so interested in SDG? Uh, you know, there, there seems to be very little correlation between a uh, bank and saving the world. So, uh, yeah, well, what was the rationale behind it? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sean. Um... That is one of the most important questions to answer today for me. Um, and it goes back to something more fundamental to BIBD. And, and allow me one minute uh, to just explain the whole importance of it. Um, BIBD is an Islamic financial institution. Uh, and we are called Bank Islam Brunei Darussalam, of course. Um, as an Islamic financial institution, uh, we have to go by certain values, certain very important values, core values of the bank. And one of the guiding core values, and I think we have a lot of uh, Muslim uh, friends and youth here, uh, is a concept called Makasid Sharia, which is kind of an uh, uh, objective of Islam, or going back to the fundamental. And if you look at the Makasid Sharia, without going into the details, and I think there are a lot more experts out there, is about doing good for the society. Looking after the society, whether is it wealth, lineage, knowledge, these are all the fundamental values. And we are Islamic financial institution. And therefore, that is already part of our DNA. We are born with that as an Islamic financial institution. Then as we look at what we have been doing. And if you look at even, for example, BIBD, yes. If you look at uh, BIBD, Alaf, which we look after the kids or the, the young people. Um, there's a lot of societal thing that we do as a bank for the society. And me as a non-Muslim, I always wonder, why do we spend so much time, effort and you know, monetary value on it? But the moment you understand it, it's got to do with the DNA, right? Then it becomes very clear. But as we look further and we look at how do we then look to our objective? So we have Mankasit Sharia, which is very fundamental. We have Wawasan 2035 under His Majesty guidance. And if you look at Wawasan 2035, it's about economy, it's about the people. Again, it's about a society. Just now I mentioned it's about a society. And as our Islamic value, we look at the guidance of the, His Majesty and in his very, very good wisdom, it's about the society, it's about the people. And eventually when we look at sustainability, there are 17 SDG goals. And I personally, I actually like sustainability because it's a lot more balanced uh, rather than just say climate change. 
um, because that's just one of the goal. It's about poverty, it's about welfare. Again, if you peel away 17 goals and a mouthful, it is really about the society again. How do we act for the society? So if you allow me to summarize, our Islamic value, our Islamic value as an Islamic financial institution, our DNA is for the society. If we look at us as a very important institution for Brunei, and we go by His Majesty strategy for the country, Wawasan 2035, it is about the society. And then we look at SDGs. It is also about the society. They are almost perfectly aligned, which is why to answer your question, Sean, it is why BIBD is so passionate now talking about sustainability, because it is something that we have been doing for a long time since our very beginning. It's just that now we become a bit more razor sharp by using some of the goals to work on it. And it's the same thing why we are so active in uh, working through BIBD, yes, as well, because if you talk about the long term and you talk about the future, uh, unfortunately, Sean is not me and you. So that is the two gentlemen trying to look very young today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is about the hopefully the 500 other participants listening in today. The youth, it is the youth that is going to carry this forward. And more importantly, if we don't get this right, it is the youth or the children of the youth that will really see the impact of everything that we don't do today. So it's a bit cliche, but it's exactly why we are acting now. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for the that's, masterful. Yeah, work. that's amazing. Um, it's so weird to call you PL instead of Mr. Tan, but we will take one more question in the chat. Oh, no, we don't is... have time. We don't have time <laughs> for any more questions. Okay, okay. <laughs> because we're All eating right. to the next session's time by at All least right. 10 15 Thank minutes. So, yeah. Thank you oh, so much, you. Um, team number eight. Uh, thank you, Dina Yaya. Uh, no, Dina Alia, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dina. Thank you, uh, PL. Uh, excellent job, uh, team number eight. Well done. <laughs> now, I'm MC, please take it away. Yes, thank you so much, Sean. So thank you once again, Team 8, for that wonderful inter introduction as well as for the questions. When we talk about SDGs, people are often more wary than they are excited to discuss about how we can contribute. But Team 8 and Ms. Dina have clearly shown us that we can approach it with a lot of energy and optimism. So thank you so much, Ms. Dina. It's not a secret that while we all need help one way or another, it's also one of the more difficult things to ask for. But it's important to know that just as you can help others, others can help you too. And after all, by helping each other, that's how we know that we're giving ourselves purpose. And automatically, we are making a meaningful impact to the community. And thank you so much, Mr. Tan, for all your guidance. We see now Hang how long Team Hang 8 has thrived under your care. <laughs> <laughs> all that wonderful talk. <laughs> Sustainability has always been and will always be about the people so that our future is not affected. We look forward to how our youth will contribute to this. 